Hello and welcome back to Seaside Garage and the Visa GHCI. In this video I would like to take a look at the engine. I would like to change the cam belt, I would like to change the water pump, the coolant and the oil and the oil filter. And that's about it because the engine seems to be running pretty nicely as it is. I just don't want to risk a cam belt, a cam belt failure. So that is what I'm going to do now. And the first thing I would like to do is to remove the wheel so I can get to that crankshaft pulley. Rusty, crusty, rusty, crusty. Yeah, I know viewers from the sunny areas of the world will see this and think everything is is wrong. But this is just the way cars look in my parts of the of the woods. It seems to be just fine. Um, this is what I want to remove because that should give me access to the uh, to the crankshaft pulley. And I guess it's just some clips that clips out. So what do you think? Will this be easy to remove? No problemo. There we go. And there we have the cam belt. Not looking too bad either, which is nice. So now I'm going to go ahead and drain that coolant. Only a bit of a mess. I did hit the bucket and uh, yeah, it's always, I'm, I'm, I'm a bit of an overachiever. So that takes care of the lower part of the cover. Everything looks really decent. It's just, it's just a bit old, so I don't really dare to leave it be, but this could have worked just fine. But I'm gonna change it. And then it's the top covers. And then I should act, be able to access the cam belt. Like so. This cover should be good to go. Like that. So I'm just gonna refit this because now I want to Put the engine on the ignition marks or the timing marks and then remove the cam belt. And then I can go ahead and turn the engine until I got it timed. And when that lines up, I should be able to just put a 10 millimeter dowel in, which should lock it. Yeah, and then same at the top. Next up, I want to undo the tensioner balls. It's those two, and also on the back, right in there. When I undo the lock nut, I can turn the middle part and release the tension. I don't think I will ever forget changing my first cam belt because that was one of those things. That was so daring. Also back then, I never, I couldn't afford a mechanic, and I was also, all, and I always bought old cars and was so scared of the Campbell snapping, of course. And uh, the first time I did it was in a driveway on my Volkswagen Scirocco MK2, and a friend was helping me, and my friend's father. Well, not really helping, but he knew how to do this, that kind of stuff. And you could just feel that he was in the background, just looking and making sure that everything was done right. I really felt safe doing it, knowing that he would be looking over my back from time to time. That was actually a bit of a 
pivotal pivotal moment in my car career. So with the lock nut loose, I should be able to turn that inside part and then loose the tension up there. When I turn the cam, it moves in and I want to compress it and then retighten the lock nut. Like so. And then I can go ahead and remove the belt. I'm going to remove this also now uh, to make more room, but I just have to make sure that it lines up before I refit it. Before I refitting it. But it should do, this shouldn't turn. Now, the top one could turn, so I'm not going to remove that dowel up there, but the lower one shouldn't. Yep, and it's loose. Let's just remove it. And the timing marks down here are also lining up, by the way, which is also nice. They're perfectly fine belt, by the way. There were no reason to change this, but now I will be able to sleep better at night. Next up, I want to remove the water pump after changing cam belt on the Renault Clio. 16 valve I owned. I'm never gonna complain about uh, about tightness because that was just horrible. This one is fine. Like that. There we go. That should do the trick. Like so. Yeah. No reason to do this, but I didn't know the history of this car, really. This was pretty perfectly usable. And then I need to remove the old gasket material. Firstly, I'm gonna let it soak in some gasket removing stuff like that. I'm gonna switch you off and take you back when I'm done doing this because it's just this for a long time. Okay, so I got it cleaned up, but uh, then I noticed something and this is going to be a real seaside garage video. It turns out, it turns out that I went ahead and ordered the wrong Campbell kit and water pump and all that. Uh, I misread the engine code and uh, the good thing is that the kit will fit the BX 4x4 that I have, but it doesn't fit this one. Luckily, I managed to source the correct fuel pump locally uh, and I have just gotten that. But there's no chance for me to get the cam belt and the uh, tensioner within a week or so. It, it will take quite a long time to get here because it's not available locally. So what I have decided to do is to replace the water pump. Uh, that is pretty much the hardest bit of this. And then I'm gonna order the correct cam belt. And that also gives me the chance to maybe source the plastic bits that were broken. Uh, but for now, I'm just gonna fit the new water pump and refit the old cam belt. That's a bit of an annoying thing, but it doesn't take that long to change the cam belt alone. It is the water pump that takes time, so it's not a big deal. And also, now I have seen the old cam belt, I'm not worried about it. This will last just fine. I would feel safe to drive with this a couple of years, actually. But of course, I will change it, but not now. I need my lift. I cannot just have it hanging for the next couple of weeks waiting on parts, so I will fit this one. But firstly, the new water pump. And this is just such an annoying thing. It's so important to check and recheck and recheck. And sometimes the engines in the cars are not exactly what you think is in there. Sometimes it's an engine from another year than the car because of an engine failure in the past or something like that. And yeah, that's the case in this instance. I actually have a feeling this is a 1.9, um, which, which isn't a huge deal, but still you need to know to order the correct parts. The correct parts are on their way, but it will take a while. So I'm just gonna fit that new water pump and then get on with it. I'm gonna apply some gasket seal putty to the ceiling surface. 
mainly because it keeps the gasket in place and it also makes it a bit easier to get it off. And the gasket. And then I can install the new pump. There we go. And I'm just going to fit the rest of the stuff, uh, the plastic and the cam belt. And then we should be ready to start it up and drain and refill the uh, coolant. Be back in a second. The old cam belt is back in. <laughs> well, and a new water pump. That's a good thing. I'm going to fill the uh, coolant now and then start it up and make sure that it's uh, going around the system as it is, as it is supposed to. And then with the engine hot, I'm going to change the oil. Let's go ahead and do this. Right here on this heater hose is a bleeder valve that I can hopefully open. Yeah. Oh. oh yeah, no problemos. By the way, did I ever show you this? I think it's original. Take a listen. <laughs> that is gonna make people move. I think it's original. I've seen it on them before on the bracket here. See, it looks very original, but it's a bit surprising. But the engine temperature is lowering, which is fine. Yeah, there we go. So it's working. Draining the oil when it's really hot is good to get stuff out of there. But you really need to be careful not to burn yourself. Oh, it's spraying a lot. Why is it doing that? Ah, oh, what a mess. That's very thin oil. I think it's diluted by fuel. So that made a quite, quite a bit of a mess. I think the oil is still diluted uh, by fuel. It was very thin and slightly hot also. Um, and it just came out in a very, very annoying manner. But no harm done other than a bit of oil on the floor that this can take care of. But I still need to remove the oil filter. Have the new oil filter, I'm just checking. Yeah, it looks the same. Moving up the ring. Spinning it on. Pretty sure it takes around five liters of oil. So I'm gonna begin with adding four and then take it from there. There we go, four liters are in. I'm gonna check the level. Yeah, it's actually above, so I think I'm just gonna fire it up and then recheck the oil. Good oil pressure, more than before the oil was really thinned out. We've got five bars at the moment. Nicely done. I forgot that I actually bought a new one of these because this is missing the, the top of it, the dipstick. Let's go ahead and fit this and check. Yeah, I say it's missing about a liter, which makes sense. So this was really one of those days. Wanted to change the cam belt. Turns out I had the wrong one. And this oil spill. Yeah. Some days it's easier than others. But now it got fresh oil at least, fresh coolant, and a new water pump. And in the future I will change the tensioner and 
the cam belt of course. But now at least I'm not worried about starting it. Seeing that thin oil made me a little bit sad knowing that I have started it quite a few times. So, but yeah. Anyway, thanks for watching. I need to clean up and get the Skoda inside and see you in the next one.